Hey, what's up YouTube? What's going on? Just a quick little video here and I want to explain how sitting may trigger one's symptoms. This video is for anyone out there that is just trying to get an explanation around the mechanics associated with sitting and how this may trigger one's lower back pain or symptoms. So firstly to understand, we must look at sitting itself and we must understand that there are different positions that we sit in and each position is going to have an influence on our spine mechanics and the amount of pressure on our lower back. So to give you guys an example, there's a classic office desk worker position where you have someone that is sitting at a computer and they're in this spinal flexion posture. And in this posture, the interdiscal pressure is going to be very high. And to accompany that, like I mentioned, they sit in flexion. So someone with maybe a disc bulge or disc herniation, this is likely going to severely trigger their symptoms because we sit in this flexion position, but we also have a, a lot of pressure just from being forward flexed. So that's one position that people may commonly sit in. Another position is more of an upright posture now. We're sitting in this position, the interdiscal pressure would be less compared to the first position, and our spinal position is going to change as well. So we have removed ourselves from that excessive forward flexion. We may now actually sit in a little bit of extension or we may sit more neutral. And then finally, we may have a position where individuals laid back on a chair and in this position, the intradiscal pressure would be the least when compared to the other two positions. And also our spinal position is also changed as well. We may sit in a little bit of flexion or we may sit in a little bit of a, a flattened spine or neutral or even extension. It kind of really depends on the way one is positioning their lumbar spine and pelvis. But the point that I just wanted to make with regards to those three positions is that each position is going to have an influence on the amount of pressure on the lumbar spine and also the position of a lumbar spine. People with flexion based issues are going to do the worst with this forward flexion position and even sitting neutral may even trigger one's symptoms just because the intradiscal pressure and maybe they have a little bit of flexion occurring and oftentimes people that lay back may actually get the most relief. And that is specifically for flexion based issues. So that is kind of one thing to understand when it comes to sitting is that the position that you're sitting in is going to influence your pain symptoms and different positions may provide relief and others may actually trigger your pain. Another thing to understand as well is that when we sit and if we sit for a prolonged period of time, what ends up happening is that the spinal disc itself will start to flatten out and it will deform. So as I continue to apply pressure, and if we sit in a little bit of flexion as well, that disc here, as it flattens, it may hit the back nerve root here and start to trigger pain. And that is for anyone with maybe a disc bulge or disc herniation. So if you flatten things out, you sit for a prolonged period of time, you may get some pain symptoms there. At the same time, people with facet joint issues, when you flatten the disc out too, pressure will start to move from the disc to the facet joints here. So people with some osteoarthrosis, if they sit for a prolonged period of time, the forces will increase on the joints here and that may cause some irritation in the low back. Now, that is for specifically for anyone with maybe disc issues or facet joint issues, but people with maybe extension based issues actually may get relief from being in a flexion posture because they may be taking some of the force off the back of their spine, on the facet joints and whatnot. So people may actually get relief from that position. But the whole point of this video is I wanted to just explain a little bit about the mechanics associated with sitting and how this may trigger pain for someone with maybe a disc bulge, or disc herniation that has flexion issues or maybe with facet joint issues or maybe with some extension based issues and they may get relief from going to flexion. The important point to understand with regards to all this is that when it comes to sitting, everyone's optimal position is going to be different and it's going to be dependent upon what position that you sit in triggers your pain and maybe how long you're sitting as well. I could say that prolonged sitting isn't good and it would be important to get up and walk around and take breaks every so often just to reduce some of that stress that may have been built up from that disc flattening out and placing stress on different areas of the, the lumbar spine. So. The important takeaway guys from this video, everyone's position with regards to sitting 
is going to have a different influence on their low back pain. Sitting in a flexion position like this is not gonna be good for someone with flexion-based issues, but someone with extension-based issues, it actually may provide relief. And then at the same time, pro something like prolonged sitting is not gonna be the best just because you may shift some of the forces from the disc to the facet joints. People with facet joint issues could trigger issues or you may just get issues from the disc pressure being built up, the disc flattening out and hitting a nerve root. And also depends on the spinal position that you are sitting in. If you're sitting more flexed or extended. So I just wanted to make that video guys. I hope this kind of clarifies things and maybe gives you a little bit of an understanding about how the difference in mechanics can trigger one's low back pain and how it's important to find the position that provides most relief for you and to stick to that position if it provides relief until things kind of come down and you can notice improvements. With that being said, guys, I'm gonna wrap up this video. If you have any questions, comments, be sure to leave them below. And also, if there's anything you want me to cover in a future video, be sure to leave a question and or send me an email or whatnot, and I will be happy to kind of make a video or an article around that topic. Okay, guys, so with that being said, all the best and take care.